Hey, this is CN Detail. I'm Chris. This is MMA for you. I'm going to be doing my predictions for UFC Fight Night 60, Thats versus Thompson, which happens on February 14th. Overall, um, there's actually there. It's not a bad card if you're looking for prospects. Um, there's a lot of them too. Even in the prelims, you have James Mutazri, Tim Elliott versus Zach McCoskey is a good fight. Chess Kelly versus Jim Ehlers is a really good fight between prospects. Um, let's see, Rodrigo Monstro's fighting. He's not a great prospect. Really good Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, though. Interesting fight with Lance and Tavares. Ray Borg is a prospect to look out for. Kevin Lee is a prospect to look out for. Patrick Walsh actually isn't, is a very raw prospect. I don't expect him to win. But he's someone that might actually turn out to be decent in the future. He's super raw, though. Neil Magny has been one of the more... Uh, coming out of the Ultimate Fighter, he is one of the better guys to really turn things around. From a guy that I thought would just get cut from the UFC pretty early to a guy that's on a really good win streak... And um, actually gradually improving. Max Holloway, great prospect. Brandon Thatch, great prospect. Uh, if you want to consider Stephen Thompson a prospect, uh, still he, he's not too bad. I, I don't think of him as a prospect, though. But um, let's get started. Okay. Uh, in the main event, we have Brandon Thatch versus Stephen Thompson. So this is interesting because this fight was... Uh, the card originally was supposed to have Safadine Brown, and uh, Safadine was pulled out of the card. Matt Brown was moved to the Texas card against uh, Johnny Hendricks. And this fight, which I, I, I would assume is going to be now a five-round fight instead of a three-round fight, um, you know, main event total is five rounds, so... That's my guess. This is this is gonna be five rounds. Brandon Thatch has an eleven and one record, eight wins by KRTK, three wins by sub. Twenty nine years old on a ten fight win streak. Uh, the thing is, though, he last fought in November twenty thirteen. I think he uh, knocked out uh, Paul Tiago. Uh, he is a finisher with all of his finishes being in the first round. He's got some strong Muay Thai skills. He's big for the weight class too, actually. He has some really good knees. This guy is a violent guy. He's very aggressive, always pushing forward, and he's heavy-handed as well. Steven Thompson, 10-1 record, 5 wins by KRTK, 1 win by sub, 31 years old, on a 4-fight win streak. He has a karate-style stand-up, really good kicks. I always say, say this about uh, Taekwondo, like traditional martial arts practitioners, karate karate practitioners and whatnot. When they move into the UFC, I noticed that they tend to be very accurate. And it's part of the style, though, you know, uh, to have that level of accuracy. And I noticed that Stephen Thompson, pretty accurate guy uh, with his striking. And his grappling has been greatly improving. This is a guy that was getting taken down at will by Matt Brown. Now you even see him try, like, his own offensive takedowns and whatnot. Um, I'm going to go with Thatch here. There are a couple things that make me a bit hesitant. One, I don't know how he's going to do in five rounds. Uh, two is the layoff. Layoffs can hurt people. It can also help people. You just don't know. That, that's the thing with layoffs. Sometimes they need that time to heal. Or, and sometimes... And they come back and they're just finding other guys. They just lose the rhythm. They they just they they lose momentum. You know they they have a hard time. You know they got ring rush and whatnot. So um, yeah, the uh, layoffs are kind of uh, you know tr are, are very tricky. You know what I mean? Um, Stephen Thompson too. I mean, you know. I don't know if he'll be able... He might be able to just keep the fight on the outside. I don't know. 
and maybe just pepper Thatch from the outside. It's it's not outside the realm of possibility. Thatch, I, I feel, is a little better inside, whereas Thompson is better on the outside. Um, it's Thatch's aggression versus like Thompson's movement. So it's an interesting style matchup in that sense. Uh, but I gotta go with Thatch. He's, he's the more potent finisher. Um, you know, I, I think his aggressiveness will pull through. Similar to how Matt Brown fought Stephen Thompson, actually. But hopefully not getting hit so much, you know, on the way in. Um, so, Brandon Thatch for the win. Um, interesting matchup for sure. Definitely things, there are definitely things working against Thatch. And that's also not to underestimate Stephen Thompson himself. There's a style that could, like I said, outside, you know, outside, pick his shots. Style that could um, thwart, I guess, Brandon Thatch's more, Brandon Thatch's aggression. So, um, but overall, I think Brandon Thatch wins this one. Next right after that, Max Holloway fights Cole Miller. Cole Miller, 21 and 8 record, 3 wins by KO Tico, 15 wins by Sub. Also has 2 losses by KO Tico, 30 years old on a 2 fight win streak, training out of ATT. He has a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. He has some really strong back, uh, back control. He's good off his back. His stand up's actually good, but his stand up defense isn't that great. Despite him being pretty tall, but so is Max Holloway. Max Holloway, 11 and 3 record, 5 wins by KO Tico, 1 win by Sub. 23 years old on a four fight win streak. He's got some strong kickboxing. He uses combinations really well. He's a uh, high volume striker with good cardio. He can go at a really good pace with a lot of volume for three rounds and still be fresh. His takedown defense is actually pretty solid. Um, and his overall grappling is just improving as well. He's got a good chin too. He's a guy that I don't see wobbled. He went three rounds with Conor McGregor, and I don't know if he was, uh, I, I don't remember too much of that fight, but in the stand-up portions, I remember he got hit a lot and clean, but I never, I don't remember he actually got dropped or wobbled. I'm really high on Max Holloway. Uh, this is a good step up for him. Cole Miller, he's been around the block. He is some really, he's a really good grappler. Uh, his stand-up's actually been improving as well, but I think with Holloway, his use of volume, his chin, and his takedown defense will get him to win here. Uh, I'm going to go with Max Holloway for the win. I think he can just uh, do what Max Holloway, you know what, do what Max Holloway does, you know, just high volume striking, get, you know, really get in there. Um, maybe take one to give like two, uh, and just wear down his opponents while defending takedowns, uh, and, and whatnot. So, uh, Max Holloway for the win there. Next fight at that, Keiichi Kunimoto fights Neil Magny. Kunimoto, 18 and 5 record with two draws and one no contest. Two wins by K.O. Tico, nine wins by Sub, 33 years old. He's a 5'10", whereas Neil Magny is 6'3". He's on a 7-fight win streak, even though I don't believe that he should have won his last fight. I think it was against Richard Walsh, was it? I think it was Richard Walsh. He does have some good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills. His offensive takedown ability isn't too bad. Stand-up's just average, though. Neil Magny, 13-3 record. 4 wins by K.O. Tico. 2 wins by Sub. That's has 2 losses by submission. 27 years old on a... Five fight, one streak. Uh, training out of grudge. The name of his game is boxing. He uses straight punches really well. He, he's a range fighter. And his wrestling, his offensive wrestling actually isn't too bad. Um, guys that tend to do well against Magni on the ground tend to be like really high level Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Like Sergio Moraes managed to submit Neil Magni. Uh, he had a hard time coming in though, and uh, Monstro 
Uh, Rodrigo Monstro, he took the first round from Magni. Sw got a nice half guard sweep and just mounted him. But they're like the really highest level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts. Uh, he's not a guy that tends to get outstruck uh, as of late. Um, and I'll say this too with Magni versus Kunimoto. Uh, I feel like Magni's already beaten guys on the level of Kiichi Kunimoto. You know, there's guys like Alex Garcia, Tim Means. I mean, not the same stylistically, but just on that, like, that rung of the ladder, you know? Uh, recently beat William McRio. And I, I, I gotta go Neil Magni to win this one. I think he'll just, you know, fight. Kunimoto from the outside, use his boxing, avoid the takedowns, and just kind of do what Neil Magny does, you know? Um, he's getting a little better about being a finisher these days, which is good. He doesn't have too much power, but he has a lot of volume in his striking, and he's definitely a guy that can wear down opponents, but... Um, yeah, yeah, but he's not like a one-punch knockout threat or something like that. Nonetheless, Neil Magny for the win here. And he, he's actually been greatly impressing me as of late. I, I, I'm i actually curious to see how he's going to do against higher-level competition. Um, should he beat Kunimoto? Next fight after that, Daniel Kelly fights Patrick Walsh. Uh, Daniel Kelly, 8-0, undefeated record. Two wins by K.O. Tico, five wins by Sub. He's 37 years old, and he is big for 185. Notice that in his last fight when he fought uh, Luke Zakrich. He's a judo Olympian. Uh, with a really strong clinch. Good top control. Really pushes forward and super aggressive. His stand-up sloppy, though. I mean, that guy just, like, wings punches. No sense of defense, but makes up for it in aggression. Patrick Walsh, 5-1 record. Two wins by K.R. Tico, one win by Sub, 26 years old on a two-fight win streak. Trains out of wide crew MMA with the likes of John Howard. Uh, I know he fought at 205 uh, in his last outing. Um, forgot who he fought in his last fight. But I remember him in the Ultimate Fighter. He was just this really rugged, super green and raw fighter. But he's a good wrestler. He always pushed forward. Um, really aggressive guy. Just he's just really green. Uh, you know, he's not a refined fighter. Um, you know, but there is some potential here. Uh, like I said, he fought at two hundred five on the show, and when he in his first round of UFC, so he's cutting to one eighty five. He's small for weight class, anyways. Um, so he might actually be closer to. Same size as Daniel Kelly. Uh, with that said, um, I'm going to go with Daniel Kelly to win this one. I really underestimated him in his last fight against Luke Zachrich, you know. Uh, his age, for one thing, you know, being 37. Um, didn't speak too highly uh, for me. I, th I want to say he was on the Ultimate Fighter and got, like, blasted or something like that. But, um... You know, one thing, yeah, but now that I got to see more of his game, you know, his aggressiveness, uh, you know, the fact that he's always pushing forward. Um, but Patrick Walsh is kind of like that too, though. Uh, I, you know, Kelly, though, has got that Olympia, you know, the judo to go with that uh, really strong clinch game. So I got to go Daniel Kelly to win that one. Um... Walsh, though, is very game. A lot of people don't know him or expect much from this guy. I'm actually, um... And honestly, if you watch his fights, he, he doesn't look that great. He's super raw, super green. But uh, I think he might actually have some potential. But I, I don't think he's going to beat uh, Kelly at this point. I think Kelly might actually be able to outdo what Walsh does. Um, and, and making fights kind of an ugly fight you know he, he can make it an ugly fight uh and i think daniel kelly can make it an even uglier fight uh next fight so daniel kelly for the win there next fight after that Mikel prezeris fights k 
Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee, 9 and 1 record, 4 wins by submission, 5 wins by decision. Only 22 years old on a 2 fight win streak. He's a good wrestler with really improving stand up. Mikhail Prozeris, 18 and 1 record, 1 win by TKO, 8 wins by sub, 31 years old on a 2 fight win streak. So he's got some really good Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills. His offensive takedowns are really good. He has strong top control. If you watch this fight against, uh, I think it was Marbeck, uh, was it Tyswap? Yeah, I think it was Marbeck Tyswap, man. This guy took him down all day, got on top, uh, and just grinded. Um, actually, did pretty well against Paul Tiago. It's one loss against Paul Tiago. Um, but, you know, he, he's able to grind pretty well. Uh, stand up, I'd say, is just average. This is an entrance fight. I think of Prozeris kind of like I think of Tebow or Maso and Duba. Guys like that. Uh, these hulking Brazilian uh, top control grapplers. Um, yeah, because even at, at 170, the guy was just this little pit bull. And I hate to use the word pit bull because that's the most overused nickname in MMA. But he, he, he kind of was. And at 155, he's just... A bigger, huge, <laughs> you know, a bigger, like, pit bull now. Kevin Lee, though, man, I, I am really impressed with this guy. I like his stand-up. I like just the overall improvements he, he's made. There's only losses to Ally Quinta, but um, he's a really good wrestler. Great athleticism. Uh, this one's actually tough for me to call because this may also be a case of, like, too much too soon for Kevin Lee. Spurzeris is just uh, one guy that could, even against good wrestlers, could take them, poss possibly, take them down and grind them out. Um, don't, you know, don't give it back to Spurzeris or, or anything like that either, you know. He, he can get the sub if he wants to. Um, but I'm going to go with Kevin Lee. I think he might be able to out, out strike Spurzeris. Out athlete Prezeris. Um hopefully he can defend his uh, takedowns and maybe even get his own takedowns on Prezeris. But uh, it, it's it's a really definitely one of those uh, good tests uh, for Kevin Lee at this point as far as to see his like progression and um, and uh, Prezeris should be able to test him pretty well. Uh, tough challenge I, I gotta say but Kevin Lee for the win there. So right after that, Ray Borg fights Chris Kalades. Kalades, 8 and 1 record, 2 wins by KO Tico, 3 wins by Sub. 33 years old on a 2 fight win streak. Trains out of Fit Plus with uh, TJ Grant. Um, I remember, you know, a lot of people will probably remember Kalades as the guy who took the fight on short notice against Patrick Hollahan. He's expected to lose, and then he won. He showed good wrestling. He's very, he always pushed forward. He's really aggressive, real physical uh, uh, guy. And he showed some pretty good stand-up as well. He's riding Ray Borg, 7-1 on one record, 1-1 one by TKO, 5 wins by Sub. All of those submission wins are by Rear Naked Choke. He's tw 21, only 21 years old. Training out of Fit NHB with uh, the likes of Tim Means. He's got some r really good Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Strong back control, man. This guy, watch this fight against uh, Dustin Ortiz. This guy like, takes the back like uh, like some of the best. Uh, there's some of the best back takers because like Ray Borg is like there. Um, Jeez. Oh. I mean, there's a lot of guys that are good at taking the back, you know, like, but, like, these great, there, there's another guy in his white class that's uh, really good at taking the back, um, Brazilian guy, I totally forgot his name, uh, but he, he's good at taking the back, <laughs> jeez, but nonetheless, Ray Borg, Super good back control. He has some good stand-up, too. And really good in the scrambles and a good wrestler. I am super high on Ray Borg. I think sooner rather than later, this guy's going to fight for a title. Um, Ray Borg for the win here. Might be able to out-wrestle Kalades. 
If he takes her back, it's all over. This guy just awesome back taker. Stand up's not too bad either. He's he's got solid stand up. Just a really good fighter to keep an eye out for. Ray Borg for the win here. Okay, on the prelims, that will also be on Fox Sports One. Uh, Nick Lentz fights Tiago Tavares. Nick Lentz, 25 and 6 record with two draws and one no contest. Six wins by K.R. Tico, ten wins by Sub. He also has two losses by K.R. Tico, 30 years old, training out of ATT. He is a grinder. Uh, it's really good wrestling, strong top control. He's really good in the ride position. This is a guy that, uh, he just kept taking down Hakron Diaz and just. Uh, it was just riding him for three rounds. Um, he's got a good clinch. And his stand up's actually improving. He's not, his stand up isn't bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Tiago Tavares, 19 5 record with one draw. Two wins by K.O. Tico, 13 wins by Sub. He also has three losses by K.O. Tico, 30 years old on a two fight win streak. Trained out a team, Tavares, with the likes of uh, Ivan George, uh, Ricardo Toloni. And uh, a lot of others actually training out of Team Tavares. Uh, Tavares is a legit Brazilian Jitsu black belt. Uh, he's not a great wrestler, but he's, his wrestling consists of getting you up against the cage and just relentlessly going for those takedowns. He's got really good top control. His guard passing is really good as well. Stand up is improving, but his chin is very questionable. Interesting fight because I was actually really impressed with what I saw from Tavares when he beat Peralta in his debut at 145 pounds. A really good test here too against Nick Lentz. Um, it's actually kind of hard for me to call. I, I, I would imagine Nick Lentz would probably be more favored to beat Tavares. But um, I'm going with the gamble here actually. I'm going to go with Tavares. Here's my reasoning. Uh, Tavares is not a guy that can get ground. I I would be somewhat surprised if Nick Lance can just grind Tavares. Tavares is a good scrambler. His Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is top notch. I mean, you know, it's not like he doesn't understand positions. Granted, Lance did manage to just grind upon Hawkins Diaz, who has really good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills himself. Um. But I just, I, you know, you can even go back pretty far back to like the Tyson Griffin fight or something. It's not like he's going to, he's not the type of guy to just stay on his back or, you know, allow, you know, not scramble back to his feet or, or try and, and scramble to top position himself. Uh, the stand up's interesting. Uh, I don't kind of favor Lance, kind of not. Uh, so far as his stand up isn't that bad bad. I, I'd say Lentz is just a little better in the stand-up. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised to see Tiago Tavares try and get his own takedown to Lentz. Possibly not even get the takedown. Just Maybe just try and fish for um, back control. Wouldn't surprise me if Tavares uh, tried that. Tough one for me to call. I... I I can see Lentz, um, I can see Lentz playing his game against Tavares, but, uh, I don't know, I think, uh, I think that Tavares can, I don't know if he can outdo many areas of Lentz, maybe outscramble Lentz, I think he might be able to get more dominant positions on Lance and keep them. Um, yeah, this one's actually tough for me to call. I'm actually lean, kind of leaning towards Lance because I don't know what Tavares can really outdo Lance in. I'll stick with my guns out. I'll go with Tiago Tavares for the win here. Um, like I said, I was impressed with uh, what I saw from at 145. But... Um, We'll see what happens. Uh, I can definitely see avenues for Lentz winning this one himself. Next right after that, Efrain Escadero fights Rodrigo Monstro Guana de Lima. 
Uh, the Lima has an 8 and 2 record with uh, one draw, six wins by submission, two wins by decision, 22 years old. Uh, so, yeah, he fought. Last time he fought was against Neil Magny and he lost at 170. So, I guess he's cutting to 155 for this. Um, he's got some really good Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I believe he's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. I should, I should have checked him. Almost positive he is. Um, and he's really strong off his back, too. His ground game is, is definitely a strength. His stand up's not that great, though. Uh, Efrain Escudero, 22 and 9 record, 2 wins by KOTK, 12 wins by sub. That says 2 losses by submission. 20 years old, training out of the MMA lab. He is an ultimate fighter winner. He's a good wrestler, good Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills. His stand up's like average. I wouldn't say it's great, I wouldn't say it's bad. Um, just average. You know, this is like, what, the third time that Efrain Escudero has been back in the UFC. And he has progressively just looked rather unimpressive. <laughs> it's unfortunate, too. Um, he's a good fighter. I think, you know, when he came into the UFC, he was a good prospect. I think at 22-9, and nine, <laughs> Uh, he's not much of a prospect anymore, despite his age. He's only 28. But, um, he's just been looking less and less impressive. Um, a lot of times he, he'll strike with guys when he should be wrestling, and he's wrestling with guys when he should be striking. Um, so, with that said, I am going to go with Rodrigo uh, Guana to win this one. Just because of just how unimpressive Escadero can look and unmotivated too. Sometimes he just he goes in there and looks like he just wants to collect a paycheck. Uh Adam needs to win, take down, and use his superior grappling. That's how I that's how I see it for Rodrigo Montro uh, for the win here. Next fight after that, really good fight to Jim Ayler's fights Chas Skelly. Jim Ayler's 13 on one record, two wins by KO Tico, nine wins by Sub, 20 years old on a nine fight win streak. Uh, this guy's just good everywhere, man. Uh, you know, watch his, I actually rewatched his last fight against Alan Omer. You know, he did get dropped and then he like dropped Alan Omer. <laughs> also, and, and Alan Omer's a really good prospect. Uh, Ayler's just good stand up, solid on the ground, and he's a good wrestler. Just really good everywhere. Chess Skelly, 13 on one record. Two wins by Kertiga, seven wins by Sub. 29 years old on a two fight win streak. Training out of Team Takedown, which likes of like Johnny Hendricks and the Rochelles and whatnot. So he's got some really strong wrestling. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu's good. Um, stand up's just average. He, he still has kind of awkward footwork. Um, really out grappled Sean Seriano his last fight. Just took him down, took his back, and um, you know just did that for pretty much three rounds. Uh, so this one's kind of tough for me to call because I'm actually pretty high on Ailers, but Chess Kelly is not a bad prospect himself. I think that Ch I'm gonna I'm leaning towards Chess Kelly here. Big reason is just the wrestling. Uh, honest truth. Uh, it's not like Jim Ayers cannot defend Chaskelly's takedowns or anything like that. But I don't think he can defend all of them. Um, I think Ayers is a better striker. Uh, but like I said, he, he's going to probably have to worry about the takedown threat of Chaskelly. Um... So, you know, it's just a case of that small difference. I think Ehlers might be the more well-rounded fighter, but Skelly has, is just the, I feel is probably going to be the superior, he should be the superior wrestler for sure. Arguably the superior grappler. Ehlers might be able to scramble back to his feet though if he's taken down. Maybe not so easily get like, get in a really bad position against Skelly. Um... But I, know, I, I just think that wrestling is going to be that one difference maker. Make possibly make Ehlers hesitant to throw while he has to defend takedowns all day from Skelly. And even tired, because Chess Skelly, he took that fight against Soriano on short notice. Um, 
You know, and even when he's tired, he's still working a takedown and grappling game. Uh, I mean, he was really tired, too. <laughs> um, but he's still able to work it despite his fatigue. So, uh, Chas Skelly for the win there. And next fight after that, Tim Elliott fights Zach Makovsky. Tim Elliott has a 10 and 5 record with one draw. Three wins by KO Tico, four wins by Sub. He also has two losses by submission. 28 years old on a two fight losing streak. Trains out of uh, Glory MMA and Fitness with the likes of James Krause and Zach Cummings. He's a really good wrestler. He's pretty big for the weight class, actually, with strong top control. His ground pound's really good. His stand up's really unorthodox. It's actually just pretty bad. But he's so unorthodox, like he, he'll go in really odd, almost sideways stances. He'll throw like hurricane kicks. <laughs> Watch the Dodson fight. Um, his, his chin is really good, and stand up defense kind of sucks. Zach McCoskey, 18 and 5 record, 1 TKO, 6 subs. That's his 3 losses by submission. 32 years old, training out of Philadelphia Fight Factory with the likes of like Sam or Pisa. He's a former Bellator bantamweight champion. Of course, he fights at f flyweight now. He's a strong wrestler with good cop control. His cardio is really good. He's strong in the scrambles. Stand-up's actually solid. The big knock on Makovsky, though, is he is just not a potent finisher. Uh, the guy just... In um, the stand-up, he's not a guy that I expect to see wobble or drop his opponent. And even if he takes you down, he's not a guy that's like that I can that really finishes guys with ground and pound. Um, doesn't always even get in the position to get the submission. Also, um, it's not like he has no finishes under his record or anything like that. But he's just not a potent finisher. Tough one for me to call. I can actually see, you know, Tim Elliott, he took down like Joseph Benavides. He is very strong for weight class and a good wrestler. But Zach Makovsky, he's also a good wrestler and a good scrambler too. He might actually be able to take Elliott down. Should be the cleaner striker, even though I think, um, I don't know how he's going to handle the unorthodox style of Elliott. I can also see Elliott just really trying to go for take. I can actually see Elliott successfully getting takedowns on Makovsky. But I can see Makovsky scramble back to his feet a lot of times. Uh, with that said, I'm going to go with Makovsky for the win here. Close fight though. Good fight here. But uh, I, I, I'm leaning towards Makovsky. And finally on the fight past prelims, Jake the Librarian Lindsay fights James Muntazri. Muntazri has a 7-2 record, 3 wins by K.O. Tico, 2 wins by Sub, 26 years old, training out of Black House. Uh, a lot of guys are training that are in the UFC actually are training out of Black House these days. Alan Jabon, uh, Justin Kish, Kevin Casey, Brian Ortega. Um, so yeah, and, and, uh, there's actually so, uh, a lot of good fighters out of Black House these days. He has a Taekwondo background and, and pretty highly credentialed too. I mean, it's one thing to say, oh yeah, it's a Taekwondo background. No, he's got a lot of accolades to go with it. Stand-up's good. His takedown events are actually pretty solid and he has good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills. I personally felt that he should have got the win against um, Joe Ellenberger in his last fight. I, I was... You know, Joe Ellenberger didn't do much to Montazri. I mean, Montazri, they're both really tired. Montazri took that fight on, like, really short notice, and I thought he should have got the win. Jake Lindsay, 9-2 and two record, 4 wins by K.O. Tico, 3 wins by Sub. That's his 2 losses by submission. He's on a 2-fight losing streak. Um, He's got a good clinch. He's not too bad on the ground as well, if he's on top. Um, but man, the, the guy's striking, overall striking is pretty weak. Stand-up defense is very weak. Uh, when he fought John Tuck, I mean, that guy would just run into overhand rights. His grappling, he's been out grappled. If you watch his last fight against Al Olivier, uh, Olivier Aben Masser, uh, I mean, the guy got like, scarf hole, was it, no, no, it was like this. It was like a judo style uh, armbar. I think it was like a someone does like scarf on armbars. No, no, no. He got a triangle. He got a triangle 
with like what looked like a Khmer or something like that. But it wasn't. No, it wasn't. But anyways, uh, I'd have to rewatch the fight. I just remember it's a very unique uh, submission. Nonetheless, uh, you know, I've always liked Jake Lindsay because the fact that he's a librarian who fights. But he's kind of shown that he's not UFC material. Uh, James Mutaji, I think, is UFC material. I think he can definitely outstrike Lindsay. Maybe even drop him. I, I can't really see him getting taken down. So, yeah, James Mutaji for the win there. Okay, to recap on the main card, I'm Brandon Thatch over Stephen Thompson. Max Holloway beating Cole Miller. Neil Magnet over Keiichi Kunimoto. Daniel Kelly over Patrick Walsh, Kevin Lee beating Mikhail Prezeris, Ray Borg over Chris Calades. On the Fo Fox Sports 1 prelims, of Thiago Tavares over Nick Lentz, uh, Rodrigo Guana de Lima beating Efrain Escadero, Chess Skelly over Jim Ehlers, and Zach Mikowski beating Tim Elliott. And on the UFC Fight Pass prelims, of James Mutazri beating Jake Lindsay. So that's it for my predictions for UFC Fight Night 60. That's Richard Thompson. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And that's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.